Good evening and thank you for joining us. The Labour Advisory Board has reached a consensus to amend the so-called 418 rule under the Employment Ordinance to give workers more flexibility to become entitled to a continuous contract. A Labour sector representative welcomed the move, saying the rights and benefits of employees would be better protected. Mimo Sengai reports. Under the current so-called 418 rule, an employee who is hired continuously by the same employer and work at least 18 hours per week for four weeks or above is considered as being employed under a continuous contract and that will entitle the employee to benefits including sickness allowance and pay annual leave. After reviewing the ordinance, the Labour Advisory Board decided to amend the rule by making four weeks at a single unit and change the required working hours to 68. That means a worker who has worked for 68 hours within four weeks. Labour authorities said they will soon start amending the ordinance. A Labour sector representative welcomed the amendment, saying the rights and benefits of employees will be better protected. At the past, some of the employer only arrange 17 working hours at the fourth week. So although the workers may work for more than 100 hours a month, but they still cannot comply with the requirements of the continuous employment contract, we hope the law amendment can help the loophole. Lam expects thousands of retail, food and beverage employees to benefit from the amendment. Meanwhile, INC, an employer representative from the Labour Advisory Board, believes the amendment will impose a greater financial burden on employers from the retail and restaurant sectors. He said the extra cost could be up to $150 million. Mims Nai, TVB News. A court today found actor Gregory Wang Chung Yu and three other people guilty of rioting during the 2019 social movement. On July 1, 2019, a group of protesters stormed into the Legislative Council. Some vandalized facilities inside the building and were later arrested. A district court judge today found four people, Gregory Wong, Ho Chen Yin, Ng Chi Yong and Lam Kim Kwan, guilty of rioting. During the trial, Wong claimed he had only entered LegCo to give a mobile phone charger to a reporter. The judge disagreed and said evidence shows Wong hugged and tapped the shoulders of a protester before leaving the area, suggesting that Wong supported the actions of the protester. The case has 14 defendants, with eight of them having pleaded guilty to offenses including rioting. Former Nix Digital CEO Chen Kim Hong said it was his decision to become a prosecution witness in the trial of ex-media tycoon Jimmy Lai, who was his previous employer. Chen made the statement in court as part of his cross-examination. This is the 21st day of the national security trial of Lai, who has pleaded not guilty to one count of sedition and two charges related to the national security law. Armed police officers were on guard outside the West Kowloon Law Courts. The defense continued the cross-examination of Chen Kim Hong today. The defense lawyer questioned Chen about his sudden decision to become a witness for the prosecution when he was taken into custody. Chen said he made the decision on his own will and was not invited by police. The trial has been adjourned until Friday. A protest slogan, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times, was found on a sidewalk in Wang Tai Sin this morning. So far, police have classified the case as criminal damage. It's understood the slogan was likely created in 2019, but the paint that covered it up has peeled off. The eight-character slogan was spotted outside the mall near Sik Sik Yun Wang Tai Sin Temple. The slogan was later covered up by police and that section of the pavement was cordoned off. Combing through archival footage, the same location had similar graffiti during the city's anti-extradition movement in 2019. The U.S. has attributed the drone attack that killed three U.S. service members in Jordan to the Islamic resistance in Iraq. That's an umbrella group of Iran-backed militias. The development comes as President Joe Biden weighs his options to respond to the strike. More from NBC News. Tonight, new details on the expected American retaliation for a deadly drone attack on U.S. troops for which President Biden holds Iran responsible.
US officials describing a campaign that could last for weeks, expected to include Iranian targets outside of Iran. Telling NBC News the targets have not been finalized, but to expect strikes on multiple places in several countries and locations, including cyber operations. When you're talking about what we're anticipating here, which won't just be a one-off. As I said, the first thing you see will not be the last thing. Today, the White House saying an umbrella group of Iranian-backed militias called the Islamic resistance in Iraq carried out Sunday's attack on the remote outpost in Jordan. Three American soldiers were killed. And tonight, video of President Biden calling the parents of specialist Kennedy Sanders. We're promoting her posthumously to sergeant. Oh, wow, that Thanks, is sir. the best news I've heard today. Thank you so much. You don't know how much that means to us. But there are questions tonight. U.S. strikes in recent months retaliating for attacks by Iranian-backed groups, including a faction of the Islamic resistance in Iraq, did not deter them. And the current delay in a U.S. response is giving the militias time to prepare. A senior Iraqi official tells NBC News many Iranian-supported factions have been evacuating bases. Meanwhile tonight, one militia with ties to Iran, Qatayb Hezbollah, announcing it's suspending attacks against U.S. bases. But a government advisor here says Iran and its proxies likely hope to push President Biden to stand down and cannot be trusted. They're still maneuvering. They are still collecting intelligence. They are still planning additional strikes on U.S. targets. The U.S. Federal Reserve has left interest rates unchanged at the 22-year high of 5.25 percent to 5.5 percent as inflation continued to cool. The U.S. Central Bank cautioned that it does not expect it will be appropriate to cut rates until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably to its 2.2 percent target. That suggests a rate reduction is unlikely at its next meeting in March. The committee decided at today's meeting to maintain the target range for the federal funds rate at five and a quarter to five and a half percent and to continue the process of significantly reducing our securities holdings. We believe that our policy rate is likely at its peak for this tightening cycle and that if the economy evolves broadly as expected, it will likely be appropriate to begin dialing back policy restraint at some point this year. In Taiwan, former Kaohsiung City Mayor Kang Kuo Yu was elected Speaker of the Legislature. Han belongs to Taiwan's largest opposition party, the Kuomintang. The vote for the Legislative Speaker was held after the newly elected lawmakers of the island were sworn in today. Han won in the second round of voting, unseating outgoing Speaker Yu Si Kun of the ruling Democratic Progressive Party. 66-year-old Han was the mayor of Kaohsiung City before being removed in a recall vote in 2020, after he lost the election for the island's leadership position. Last month, the ruling Democratic Progressive Party secured its third term of leadership over the island, but lost its majority in parliament. Welcome back. Convoys with hundreds of angry farmers driving heavy-duty tractors advanced towards the European Union's headquarters in Brussels on Wednesday night. This and the latest protests aimed at getting their complaints about excessive costs, rules and bureaucracy heard by EU leaders at a summit set to get underway today. Daniel Rao tells us more. Tractors moved into position near the European Parliament in Brussels late on Wednesday, with farmers preparing to continue their protests as European Union leaders gather for a summit there today. The farmers are pushing to get better prices for produce and a reduction in EU bureaucracy that they say is a hindrance to their work. That's addition to measures to limit competition from nations as far away as Chile and New Zealand. The protest by the farmers, which is expected to see a turnout in the thousands, followed several days of demonstrations in Belgium, France and other EU countries, with hundreds of roads blocked, causing major disruptions. The Brussels demonstrations began this morning with fires being lit outside the European Parliament building. Elsewhere, tensions were high in Paris on Wednesday night. The police put an end to a short-lived attempt by protesting farmers to take over Europe's largest food market in a southern suburb of the French capital. 
Local authorities said 15 people had been placed in police custody after being arrested near the entrance of the Rangi International Market, where they headed with tractors. <laughs> Belgium currently holds the EU presidency. The country's Prime Minister, Alexander de Croo, said he would address the issue during the summit as a late addition to an agenda centered on providing aid to Ukraine in its ongoing fight against Russia's invasion. French President Emmanuel Macron is set to center his dialogue at the summit on holding off on a free trade deal with South American medical sword farming nations. The pan-European protests had an immediate impact on Wednesday. The EU's Executive Commission announced plans to shield farmers from cheap exports from all-time Ukraine and to allow them to use some land that so far was forced to lie fallow for environmental reasons. The plan still needs to be approved by member states and the European Parliament, but amounted to a sudden and symbolic concession. Dunnerell, TV News. Russia and Ukraine have exchanged about 200 prisoners of war each. It comes after last week's crash of a Russian military plane that Moscow said was carrying Ukrainian POWs. And Moscow blamed the crash on Kyiv. Footage from the undisclosed location in Ukraine shows prisoners getting off buses and enjoying freedom on home soil. Many of them got on the phone for emotional calls with their loved ones. Among those released are members of Ukraine's National Guard, Border Service and National Police. Russia said each country released 195 POWs, while Ukraine said 207 of its personnel were freed. The prisoner exchange program was under threat after last week's plane crash, with both Ukraine and Russia insisting on an international inquiry. Back locally, the observatory has forecast chilly weather around the Lunar New Year. It's been a warm day today with some sunny periods. A high temperature of 23.4 degrees Celsius was recorded. Some residents put on fewer layers of clothing. The observatory expects the warm weather to remain until this weekend. But it, still become, it will become cold as we get closer to the Year of the Dragon. The temperature on Lunar New Year's Day, that's on the 10th of the month, is expected to be between 11 and 16 degrees. Computer or AI-related fraud has claimed many victims in the city over the past years. The Hong Kong Computer Emergency Response Team Coordination Center, or Hong Kong CERT, warned that cyber attacks in the coming year are set to be more frequent and sophisticated. That's fueled by the use of generative artificial intelligence and various simulation technologies. AI-powered face swap might look fun, but the technology has increasingly been exploited by cyber criminals to not just hack and steal, but also scam or blackmail victims. In 2023, cases of phishing attack, which duped people into revealing sensitive data, rose to a five-year high in Hong Kong with a 25% jump year-on-year. Year. That's according to the Hong Kong Computer Emergency Response Team Coordination Center, which is under the Hong Kong Productivity Council. Among the data stolen is the victim's biometric information, like their faces. Some have had their faces replicated by a deep fake. People use deepfake videos to open uh, accounts in virtual banks, and then at the end they can successfully create an account and borrow money. After the infamous WannaCry attacks in 2017, Hong Kong CERT now spotlights a malicious software called LockBit, which has been gaining traction among cyber criminals since 2019. It was the most prevalent ransomware across the world last year, having targeted critical infrastructure sectors encompassing financial services, energy and government services. Lockbit, they are trying to doing the uh, double extortion. That means they are not only to just uh, encrypt your files, but also they would like to do some uh, data exfiltrations so that they will steal your data and try to publish your data to the public. According to Hong Kong CERT, AI can even program malware automatically, making it easier for people to write a virus code and become hackers. So to avoid falling prey to these AI fuel scams or cyber attacks, adopt the zero trust approach. Whenever there are urgent call or other urgent unusual requests, you, you may need to uh, verify uh, via uh, other channels. So how to spot a deep fake? Hong Kong CERT recommends two quick and easy ways. First, ask them to wave their hands slowly in front of their face. It will disrupt the AI generation of the deep fake face. Or to have another person join in the camera to see if the deep fake face is superimposed elsewhere. Jacqueline, TVB News. 
benign prostatic hyperplasia, also known as benign prostate enlargement, or BPE, is a common condition in men over 50 years old. Patients see their prostate gland enlarged but is not necessarily cancerous. A university study found patients who contracted COVID could be five times more likely to develop urinary complications than those who had not been infected with the virus. The Faculty of Medicine at the Chinese University of Hong Kong looked through the data of some 18,000 patients diagnosed with benign prostate enlargement or BPE under the city's public health system. Around half of the patients had contracted COVID. The study found that the likelihood for BPE patients to experience urinary retention or inability to completely empty the bladder increased more than fivefold after contracting COVID. Some three to 4.6 times higher the chance of seeing blood or more bacteria in their urine too. Dr. Jeremy Tio, associate professor of the Chinese University's Urology Center of the Department of Surgery, said men above the age of 60 should take extra care. He added the function and growth of the prostate glands depend on male hormones, including androgens and testosterone. And with the increase in age, the glands grow larger and are at greater risk to develop complications. The study also found patients who contracted COVID are 25 times higher in likelihood to require extra medication and surgery owing to deteriorated conditions in BPE. The COHK research team said BPE patients experiencing symptoms including difficulty in urinating should see a doctor for early treatment to prevent complications down the road. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.